Hey everyone, this is Music Tech Help Guy, and in this video, I'm going to show you 10 ways to use the Marquee Tool in Logic Pro. In my opinion, the Marquee Tool is one of the most useful and versatile edit tools in Logic, other than the Pointer Tool, of course. Now, if you're new to editing in Logic, you might just think that the Marquee Tool is a fancy selection tool. And sure, it does do that, it does function as a selection tool, but there's a lot of other functionality built into the Marquee Tool that I'll demonstrate in this video. So these are just 10 ways I like to use the Marquee Tool. Some of these you might already be familiar with, but other functions are a bit lesser known. So let's get right into this. So the main function of the Marquee Tool, other than being a selection tool, is you can also use it as a deletion or trim tool. So for example, I could make a selection and then press delete to delete the selection. I could drag over the front end here and delete that as well. And in particular, I find that using it without snap mode turned on, it makes a very good tool for editing out gaps in between waveforms. So for example, if I wanted to trim this out, I could just make a selection and hit delete, and I can cut out these gaps in between these waveforms. This is particularly helpful when vocal editing, if you're trying to get rid of background noise and breaths and extraneous noise in between the vocal phrases, it's very effective for this type of editing. And sure, you can do the same thing with the scissors tool, but it'll take you twice as long. So it's very helpful as a selection and trim tool. The marquee tool is also very useful as a separation tool, as opposed to using the scissors tool. So for example, if I turned on my bar snap here, and let's say I just wanted to take out this portion of this loop. I could just make a selection with the marquee tool and click to separate both the left and right side of this region. Then I can delete these extra regions, pull this over, hit Command R a few times, and now I've separated that area from the rest of the loop. You can also separate and mute at the same time. So you might be familiar with the mute key command where you can select a region and press Control M to mute the region, but you can also make a selection with the marquee tool and press Control M to mute just that section. I find muting regions really helpful if you're not sure if you want to delete something, so this is just a helpful way to separate and mute at the same time. Additionally, you can use the marquee tool for duplicating. So if I wanted to duplicate these two bars here, I could separate them and then hold Option and drag this out to duplicate, However, you actually don't have to separate. If you just make the selection with the marquee tool, hold option and drag this region out, you can duplicate those bars without separating the original region. The marquee tool is also very helpful for cropping regions. So if you make a selection like this, and then you press command backslash, this will crop all of those regions to the marquee selection. And sure, you could just manually trim these using the marquee tool, or by just using the pointer tools built in trim tool, but I find it much faster to crop a selection. If I just want to crop this selection, you just make the selection with the marquee tool. And again, that key command is command backslash, and that will crop everything to the marquee selection. Another function that many of you are probably already familiar with is the ability to set the locators or set the locators of the cycle range to a region selection. So if I select a region and press Command U, that will set the cycle range to my region selection. However, you can also do this with the marquee selection. So if I just wanted to maybe loop this section, for example, I can just make a selection with the marquee tool and then press Command U, and this will set the locators to the marquee selection. The marquee tool is also very helpful for transient editing, especially if you like to chop up loops and beats into individual samples and you don't want to use flex time or transient markers. For this, I have my grid snap turned off, and let's say that I want to take this drum loop and I want to chop it up into a few samples. So let's say I want to isolate this kick drum, this snare drum, and then this snare where there's like this noise after it. All you have to do is make a selection, and you could try to you know get right in there the way you want, but that's not really gonna be that precise. So what I'll do is I'll make a selection that's kind of close to the range I wanna select. And then what you can do is press the left or right arrow keys to move the marquee selection 
to the next or previous transients. So I've selected the end range here, and to adjust the front end of the marquee selection, I just hold shift and press left or right on the arrow keys. So there I've isolated that sample. I'll go ahead and press command U to isolate it and hear it on its own. And then to separate it, I just click on it. Over here, if I wanted to isolate this kick drum, I could do the same thing. I could just make a rough selection. I think the end point is okay. I just need to adjust the start point. So I'll hold shift and press the right arrow key to set that to the next transient and then click to separate. And the last one here, there's a kick followed by a snare and clap. And if I want to just isolate the snare clap from the kick, I could just make a selection. Again, the end point is fine, but I'll hold shift and press the left arrow key to move to the next transient and then just click to separate. And now I've isolated all three of these samples at their transients. This next one I demonstrated in a recent video about accessing tools in Logic, but I'll show you one more time. These are the marquee tool click zones, and you can turn these on by going up to Logic Pro Preferences General, and then from here go to Editing, and you can turn on marquee tool click zones. What this does is it allows you to use your main left click tool on the top of the region. So the pointer tool here is what's gonna be used on the top part of the region, but the bottom part of the region will automatically change to the marquee tool. So you can move a region around, and then if you choose to trim it up, you can do all of this without having to switch to another tool. Personally, I don't use click zones that much because I have no problem just holding command to access the command click tool, but obviously there are many situations where you might want to do this. Maybe you're an amputee, maybe you're missing an arm, maybe you're missing a hand, or maybe you're missing some fingers. So it could be an obvious accessibility issue, or maybe you just find using click zones a faster way of editing. I don't personally use them, but that is one easy way to access the marquee tool without having to use it as a command click tool. Another way to use the marquee tool is with automation. So if I press A to show my automation on my tracks, I could have some automation written in on here, maybe something like this, where the volume moves around a bit. And let's say that I wanna pull this whole section up or down. Now, one way to do this is you can just use your pointer tool and select all of this and just move this around to make it louder, or make it softer, but that's going to also affect everything at the end and beginning of the selection. If I just want to affect a certain selection, you can select the automation with the marquee tool, click, and this will create two additional breakpoints in the envelope, and then you can use the pointer tool to drag down or drag up and offset the automation at the marquee selection range. Another way to use the marquee tool for mixing with automation is to create automation ramps or little automation rides. I find this extremely helpful when mixing vocals. If you need to bring up just a certain phrase, you can select that phrase with the marquee tool click to create those two automation breakpoints, and then just drag up or drag down. So I could pull down a section, I could pull up this section, I could pull down this section, and the little plateau or ramp that is created is only added at the marquee selection range. And for my last example, this has to do with MIDI. Now the marquee tool does not actually exist in the piano roll editor, so you can't really use it for MIDI editing. However, you can use it when creating MIDI regions. So if I create a new software instrument track here, and let's say that I want to create a blank MIDI region that is eight bars in length. If you make an eight bar selection, I'll go ahead and turn on my grid snap here. So I'll make an eight bar selection. If you right click or control click and then select create MIDI region, this will create a MIDI region that is equal to the marquee selection. By default, if you don't make a selection, this will just create a one bar MIDI region, and then you just have to trim that out to the desired length. But I find doing this with the marquee tool just helps to skip an extra mouse click and helps to just skip an extra step. However, this does not work for pattern regions or drummer regions. So if I wanted to create an eight bar pattern region, for example, if I try that out, it'll only create a four bar pattern region. And that's just the default for pattern regions.
So that's 10 ways I like to use the marquee tool in Logic Pro. If I missed anything or you have any functions you really like to use the marquee tool for, please let me know in the comments below. I hope you guys enjoyed this video. If you did, please leave it a thumbs up and subscribe to the channel to see more content like this. As always, thank you for the support and thanks for watching.